This is the reality. Hello there. Welcome indeed to the reality. A half hour talk show talking about the reality of life as found in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, that the ways of man, our traditions and the happenings in our lives are a shadow. The reality of life, however, can only be found in Jesus Christ. If you're listening up to the reality today and you have a story to tell of God's reality in your life, I would love to hear from you. Please send me an email dudley at surereality.net. This radio program is produced by Sure Reality. Well, today on The Reality, we meet Tyler Moon. Tyler suffered a sudden cardiac arrest while he was running a 10-mile road race. He was saved by the group of people around him who performed CPR. He says, My faith in Jesus Christ has been a beacon to me and my family as we worked through the traumatic event of that day. He then adds that the biggest thing in his life is trusting that whatever happens, God has a plan for us to keep running. I actually made it about eight miles. Uh, But shortly after mile eight, I took kind of a big gasp of air and I collapsed right on the pavement. People just rushed to me. They flipped me over and realized that my pulse is is fading and they decided to start to do CPR on me in that moment. And I I often think about Hebrews 12 verses one through three and let us run the race, you know, with endurance. Co-founder of Moon Family Ministries, we speak with Tyler Moon today via Skype. I began by asking him to tell us a little bit about his early sporting life. Yeah, so I grew up in in Minnesota, so the northern part of the United States of America. And most people in Minnesota, a lot of people play hockey growing up. And I I tried playing hockey, uh, but it wasn't my thing. (laughs) And so I ended up actually really gravitating towards American football. Um, So for most of my young life, I played American football, tackle football throughout elementary school, middle school, high school, and even into college. So Mm -hmm. pretty active person doing not only the sport, but also conditioning and lifting and all the other things that go with being on a sports team. Wow. So you must be pretty fit. So why did you convert from football to to running? Yeah. So after I finished college, um, I, I played something called offensive line. So I was a bigger guy. So about uh, 275 pounds, uh, which was kind of an offensive lineman. You push people around, you you, you make way for the running backs and the quarterbacks and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I didn't want to be that that big after college. Uh, I didn't really need to be big and strong. So I was trying to lose a little bit of weight. And the only way I really knew how to do that was uh, through running. Mm-hmm. And I didn't necessarily enjoy running when I started to do it, mm-hmm. but I knew it was a good activity for me to be able to you know get outside and and move my body a little bit. Uh, yeah. Well, I jog. I don't run. I, I ran I ran one half marathon once, nearly killed myself. <laughs> but uh, I've been jogging all my life just to keep fit and, and enjoy it. Uh, one thing I love about running is uh, it kind of puts me out on the road alone. I like to run alone. So I'm alone mm-hmm. with my thoughts and prayers. Do you ever find that you, you're out there on the road just, you know, enjoying your presence with the Lord? Absolutely. Yeah. And initially when I started to run, so after I graduated from from college, from university, I moved out to the southeastern coast of the United States. So I was living on the ocean and uh, working Mm. out there and and all that stuff. And this is when I got into running and I didn't have very many friends out there. And I was kind of going through my own spiritual transformation out there, really surrendering my life to Christ, you know, truly for the first time. And while I was out there, running was kind of that companion that I had along the way. And so I spent a lot of time just out on the road by myself and thinking and um, Mm -hmm. listening to music sometimes and just being out there. And that's definitely continued today. I love listening to worship music, Maverick City music. For those that know that band, I I just really love listening to them and being with the Lord. Cool. Fantastic. Well, it's important not only to uh, for those of us who enjoy running, getting out on the road and spending time with the Lord, but really just to spend time with God in the quiet, uh, perhaps of a, of a bedroom or, uh, you know, the back garden, backyard mm-hmm. of a house somewhere, and just enjoy the presence of God is so important. But now let's get down to that story, uh, Tyler. I believe in 2019 it was while running the Twin Cities 10-mile race, you had a cardiac arrest. How did that happen? Yeah, so... On October 6, 2019, as you mentioned, I was running uh, in this big race. So in the Twin Cities, um, they have a marathon and the 10-mile race on the same day. So the 10-mile race starts a little bit earlier in the morning and the marathon happens a little bit later in the day. 
all that to say that this is kind of a big deal up where we're from. And so there's thousands of people running. There's thousands of people watching. It's this really big major event, wow. you know, pre-COVID times, um, this exciting event to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And so I signed up, you know, months in advance, uh, trained for it, prepared for it. And on that morning, I felt great heading into that, that big run. So you were, you were fit, you were trained and you were ready for the race? Absolutely. Yeah. A couple of weeks prior, I'd run about eight miles, um, kind of as my last big training run. And um, before the race, I, I just felt ready to go, ready to make it happen. Right. And, and uh, forgive me for being rather personal, about what age was this? I was 25 years okay, old. Okay, so still very young. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you started running. How far did you get before things went a little, uh, you know, uh, upside down? Mm -hmm. I actually made it about eight miles. So I was nearly done with the race when things really changed. And for me, I don't have any memory of the incident. So everything that I tell you from that perspective is from things that people have told me and mm -hmm. I've kind of pieced together. Uh, but shortly after mile eight, I took kind of a big gasp of air and I collapsed right on the pavement. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like a you know trip and fall type situation. It was a collapse. It was concerning for people to see me that way. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment, people just rushed to me, flooded to me to check in on me and see what I was doing. And it was people that were running the race, people that were, you know, watching from the, the sidewalk or the curb. And then also some, a, a race volunteer was involved as well. That was kind of helping with a, from a safety perspective. So all these people just rushed into me. And for me, I'm you know, basically unconscious face down on the pavement. Yeah. They flipped me over and realized that I, you know, I'm kind of in some deep trouble here. I'm not really breathing. My pulse is, is fading. I have blood all over my face because of the fall hmm. and they decide to, to take action and they decide to start to do CPR on me in that moment. Wow. Wow. So these are just what, co uh, co runners in the, in the race bystanders doing CPR and ob obviously it had an effect. Yes. Yeah. So, and the unique thing about the, the group too, is that they all ended up being medical professionals. Mm. So in some form or fashion, they're nurses or doctors or, uh, anesthetists, whatever it might be, they all had some medical background. And so when they flipped me over and were kind of trying to assess where I was and how I was doing, they were speaking in this medical lingo that really kind of, you know, triggered in each other, like, hey, you know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they made that call right on the spot. So um, it's so unique how God brought that group of people together in that specific time at that specific place to be able to administer CPR to me for about 10 or 15 minutes before an ambulance could come. Wow. You know, how it's funny how, how that happens, you know. Uh, many people say, so why do bad things happen to Christians? You know, surely that, uh, you know, if we're walking with God, everything should be hunky-dory and happy and everything's fine, you know. Uh, but bad things do happen to us, don't they, Tana? Mm -hmm. I remember my daughter, a very similar situation. She didn't have a, a heart attack or a, a cardiac arrest, but she, had, she was involved in a motor accident uh, in New Zealand, a severe motor accident. And uh, as you've rightly shared in, in your story, immediately, Immediately behind the car that they 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 collided with was a whole bunch of people on their way to the emergency room, uh, nurses and doctors. They were able to get in there and, and and support them. Isn't it isn't it interesting how even though bad things happen to us, if we're following Jesus, acknowledging God, He's in it with us. Absolutely, yeah. And I think it's unique too in Scripture. Jesus oftentimes talks about the suffering that we face. And it's a pretty broad term, I think, in terms of you know suffering or, or criticism from the world and things that we go to, but go through. But uh, we know that with Christ, that when we're with Him, that we're taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, not, maybe not always in the earthly sense. You know, for me, I could have died on that day, but I would have been taken care of eternally. And that is such a powerful message to to realize and to understand every single day that we not only have Christ in our daily day walk, but we have Him for eternity as well, which mm -hmm. is so powerful. And it's kind of speaks to what situation with your daughter as well yeah 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 and what's encouraging is uh, as as a believer i know that one day i'm going to die tyler you're going to die we're all going to die uh, but i know that i'm going to be with jesus when i die and that Amen. takes that takes the fear of death away doesn't it mm -hmm. Amen. So, so you were you were getting um, first aid and, and resuscitation from from this group on on the road what happened next yeah, so after they gave me CPR, ambulance could come in and, and shock my heart back into rhythm. So they put the AED on me and shocked me back into rhythm and, you know, rushed me off to the hospital. And it really was kind of like a scene from a movie or from, you know, a, a TV show that you enjoy watching with medical uh, things. So mm -hmm. 
it really was just this really fast, intense moment. And then I was off on my way to the hospital where for me, more intensity in, in, incurred, but um, that was kind of the big, big moment there that they saved me, kept me alive before I could head off to the hospital. Mm. And you were unconscious through all of this? Correct. Yeah, I don't have any memory of it. It's possible that I, I woke up, but I haven't, I haven't heard that from anybody. Uh-huh. Uh, but I don't have any memory after mile one, actually. And so uh-huh. for me, it's just putting the pieces together from what people have told me and from um, what I can remember, too, from the race day. Wow, incredible. So when did you finally come around and uh, lying in hospital, you know, you wake up in hospital and what am I doing here? What was what mm-hmm. what was what was going through your mind? Yeah, it was kind of a unique couple days because they brought me to the hospital. I was put into a medically induced coma for a short period of time just to make sure my vitals were okay, trying to figure out you know what I needed and, and when I needed it. And then after that, I, I started to come out of it that night. So Sunday morning was the race. Sunday night, I was awake after my coma um, and then in the hospital for about a week after that. But those first few days, Monday, Tuesday, I was pretty foggy. Mm. I knew some things were happening, but I couldn't really understand what was going on. Mm. Um, I have a few memories of seeing people and you know having some conversations. Um, but the big memory that sticks out to me is I remember just kind of waking up and being really confused. I had to sign some paperwork for something because uh, for some medical release type information. Mm. I think that's kind of when I started to turn a little bit was like, okay, so, something's kind of <laughs> happening here. Yes. Um, wow. But it took me a few days to really come back into it. And by that time, I kind of already understood what had happened, but I didn't really know all the details of what had happened. Did you technically die? (laughs) That's a great question. That's one that comes up often. Uh, You know, I don't know. You know, I I can't tell you for sure. Uh, They do say that my pulse, they they lost my pulse. Uh, They couldn't really feel it on the race. I'm not sure if I was there or not, but... I'm happy to be here today talking to you. Fantastic. No experience, supernatural, you know, uh, visions of heaven? No, not not for me. Um, uh-huh. That definitely didn't happen, uh-huh. but it was a unique opportunity, I guess, after the fact, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. which we may get into talking about some of the cool connections that I had after the after my race and some of the things that God showed us, not in a supernatural way in the sense of heavenly beings, but in a supernatural way in some of the connections and stories that we saw after the fact. Okay, well, give me a story then. Yeah. So the big one and kind of the most uh, profound or not profound, but the one that's spread out most on the internet and things like that is before the race, you know, I, I sign up for the race and I put on my race bib, you can put anything you want on your race bib, your name or anything that you're, you're running for organization. Mm-hmm. And I ended up putting my name, Tyler Moon. And I thought that was a good way to um, just go into the race. People can know your name. They can encourage you from the sidewalk or the curb. Mm-hmm. And then a couple uh, months later, I thought I had this thought, and now looking back, definitely from the Holy Spirit saying, hey, you should change your race bib to something that's about your faith, mm-hmm. you know, sharing your faith with people. And I think about the verse in Scripture that talks about, you know, write, write these verses on your doorposts or write them on your foreheads and just to be immersed in the Word. And so I thought, okay, let's put something on my race bib that I can use to encourage other people that see me, that I can cur- encourage myself as I run. And so I came up with the word, Jesus saves. <laughs> and at the time, I thought this is a pretty great message, Excellent. you know, very succinct. It's enough characters to fit on my race bib. So this will work. And when everything had happened, I remember my parents ended up getting my race bib and I, my dad took a photo of it. And I think they were all just blown away by that, you mm. know, those two words, how mm. God really used those two words to um, bring a, a profound impact on my story. Absolutely. He saved not only your spiritual life and eternal life, but your natural life here on earth. Exactly. Praise and I was God. hoping to do it. And in, in writing that, I thought Jesus saves was for eternity. You know, I, I wasn't concerned about on earth, yeah. but I was thinking about <laughs> it more for eternity. Yeah. And then the the real kicker with this one, this kind of cool moment, is that one of the guys that gave me CPR, his legal name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he goes by Jesse, but it's spelled Jesus kind of in like the Latino uh, spelling. So Mm -hmm. it's spelled the same way as Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so when the the media got a hold of that, that was pretty cool. (laughs) And that was cool for us even too. It was amazing to see how God used that. Yes. Yes. You know, God's got a sense of humor, hasn't he? (laughs) 
He does. I don't know. It, it's so unique how he <laughs> just really speaks to us in so many different he ways. He does. He does. Amazing, amazing stuff. Wow, amazing. Uh, well, Tyler, we've been talking quite a bit. Uh, just one more question before uh, before we move on. Uh, you were fit and healthy um, before the race. You got into the race and you heart, had a heart uh, incident with your heart. Um, did you have any history? What can you can, can you define as the, the cause of the cardiac arrest? So no history beforehand. You know, as I mentioned, I played football and was pretty active, ran a little bit before this race and everything. So there's no medical or family history that we know of. What we've come to discover the last few years is that there's a group of cells in my heart, and we just call them rogue cells. They're, they're just kind of not following the same program as the rest of my heart. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, they don't know if it's just you know, happened over time or you know these cells have deteriorated over time, but they create a kind of a funky rhythm in my heartbeat when I have a exercise. So on that specific day, this is the leading theory. I don't know if we'll ever fully know, but this is kind of the leading theory that we have right now. And so they think those rogue cells created this electrical pathway to get funny, which caused me to go into the cardiac arrest. Wow. Okay. I can see that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, Tyler, we've been chatting for a while. We're going to take a little break and be back after this. You're listening to The Reality, produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. We depend on the generous gifts of our listener to produce this program. You can help reach millions of folks with the sure reality of the message of Jesus by becoming a Sure Reality Vision Partner. To partner with us, please visit the website, surereality.net, and click on Become a Vision Partner. Hello to you. My name's Dudley Anderson. If you've just joined us, this is The Reality, a half-hour talk show talking about the reality of Jesus Christ. If you'd like to know more, please write me an email, dudley at surereality.net. If anything we've said so far has just, you know, struck a chord in your heart, I'd love to hear from you. Email me, dudley at surereality.net. Well, today in The Reality Show, we're speaking with Tyler Moon. Tyler had a major cardiac arrest when he was running a 10-mile road race. After eight miles, he collapsed and his heart all but stopped beating. Bystanders and fellow runners attended to Tyler, giving him CPR. It's interesting how most of the people that were around him at that time, helping him through this crisis, were in fact medical people. You know, it's interesting how bad things do happen to Christians, but when they do, God is always there on the spot one way or another helping us through. Tyler was rushed to hospital and put in an induced coma for a day. When he came round, he was very confused, but slowly he recovered. He shares how he was fit and he had no history of heart problems, yet he had a cardiac arrest that day. Funny thing was, Tyler had the words, Jesus saves, on the bib of his shirt. The truth is, Jesus does save for eternal life and in this life. As a Christian believer, Tyler Moon knew whatever happens, God had a plan for his life to keep on running. We're back talking to Tyler Moon today. uh, And uh, Tyler, what an amazing story. uh, Suffering a cardiac arrest on a race uh, uh, and uh, being rescued and saved not only by the paramedics, but by the crowd. With, with whom you're running, and as you rightly put on your, your bib, Jesus saves, and he saved you that day physically, but Jesus saves eternally too, you know, and that's why we write those little slogans, Jesus saves. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How did you come to know the salvation plan of God for your life? So when I was a kid, I grew up in a great Christian home, have wonderful Christian parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, was very, very, very uh, built up in a blessed home. And so I grew up in the church doing you know, church activities, going to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and Bible camp and things like that. And so I was kind of my testimony from that standpoint is, is pretty, pretty simple. Um, but I went to college and I think I, I lived out my faith about 75% of the time. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> after that time, I, when I moved away to um, Charleston, South Carolina, out on the southeastern coast of the United States of America, I really felt kind of this spiritual transformation happening in me. And I was out there for about a year in this work opportunity. And I decided to read the Bible in a full year while I was out there, which was something that I had never done before. 
and something that was really unique and powerful. And at the same time, I had joined a really great church out there and the teaching was very convicting and encouraging. And so for me, you know, I, I, I knew the Lord for a long time and I, I would say that I was um, you know, saved from a young age, but I really surrendered my life to Jesus, you know, after college. Mm -hmm. And I remember distinctly having this conversation with, a, you know, I was in a men's group on a morning of the week and one of them and kind of they're talking about salvation and talking about baptism and when, in the tradition that i grew up in you were baptized as a baby um and that was kind of when you were baptized and the church i was going to was a southern baptist church where they believe that you you're baptized when you decide to make that choice for yourself mm -hmm. and so they were talking a little bit about that and some other things and one of the people asked me you know you know when did you surrender your life to christ and I kind of was like, you know, I think I've always been, you know, living that way. So I think I've always kind of done that. Mm -hmm. And he kind of, you know, he pushed in a little bit more and said, no, but like, when did you decide to make choices that were like only for Jesus? Like, when did you really do that? And I kind of looked at him and I was like, you know, I don't know if I've ever really done that. I don't know if I've ever really surrendered, you know, everything to Christ. And so that kind of that point on, it was this idea of, okay, now it's about surrender. It's mm -hmm. not just about, I'm a Christian. I know Jesus. I love Jesus. Let me do some stuff and he'll forgive me. Mm -hmm. um, it's about really surrendering to him and living for him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily know when I, I surrendered for sure. Um, I, I feel like I've always been with Jesus, but that time after college was really that moment of true surrender and stepping into what God's real plan and promise is for, for my life. But yeah. the idea of taking ownership of your faith mm. and making that declaration, whether it's, you know, whether it's to yourself or in front of a group or to your spouse or whomever it is, but making that conscious decision to say, I'm a Christian and here's what I'm going to follow is incredibly and supremely important and, and, and biblical to be able to say, and you know, I think about in Acts when Peter stands up after, um, it, you know, the Holy Spirit comes down and he shares kind of this mega awesome sermon mm. and they ask, you know, the Pharisees, everyone asking, well, what are we supposed to do? And he says, you know, repent of your sins and mm. be baptized. Mm. And that, that is really kind of the powerful moment, I think, when we surrender our lives, we repent of our sins, and we're baptized. Mm. And that, so that, that, that's pretty powerful, and I think about that often. Yeah, it has to be a cognitive moment uh, that you make a choice to follow Christ, yes? Yeah, I, I think so, for sure. So you said you had a transformation. So how did your life transform from the old to the new? Yeah, so when I was out in Charleston reading the Bible, it really was just this unique opportunity to see God's Word for myself and see how the Spirit spoke to me through God's Word. You know, growing up in a, in a great Christian home, oftentimes I think doing the right thing was the easy thing. You know, I didn't want to have my parents mad at me. I didn't want to, you know, be seen as a, you know, a bad kid. And so it just was easy to do the right thing. It was easy to make good choices. And I know God was guiding me through that. But once I read the word and read the scriptures, everything just had so much more power and weight to it. And so it wasn't like, you know, you know, Dudley, I'm nice to you because, you know, that's easy. You know, like it's good to be nice to people because they're they're, not, they're nice back to you. <laughs> no, what the scripture tells us is that like you love your neighbor, you know, as you love yourself. <laughs> and that has so much more power and conviction in it because on some days, Dudley or, or someone else in our lives, they might not be very nice to us. And it's going to be a lot easier to be mean to them and, and, to, and to cast them away. Mm -hmm. But when we have the truth of Scripture in our lives, and I just use that, you know, one as a one example, that really is convicting and powerful. And so for me, throughout that whole year, it was putting all those connections together and starting that journey of saying, you know what, I steward my finances because of, you know, X, Y, and Z. I, you know, I, I, I pick up trash on the side of the street, not because it, it, it's a good thing to do, but because this is God's creation. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that God's creation is made holy and kept holy. Mm -hmm. And so just those little things really kind of picked um, away at my heart. And I was able to really build this strong foundation and this uh, really full out surrender to Jesus and everything that he wanted me to do. And that's the, the transformation from the, the old to the new. Incredible mm -hmm. stuff. So um, uh, go, you, you went on, and God's got a plan for your life. Um, Tyler, I know he has a plan for my life. And obviously, you know, dare we say the devil tried to strip you of that plan when you had that cardiac arrest. But God knows the plans he has for us. Uh, I believe you're a co-founder of a ministry called the Moon Family Ministry. Tell us about that. So after everything you know happened in these last few years, so in 2019, we're about you know three years away from my first you know my cardiac arrest, and we've been able to do some really cool things with sharing my story on you know podcasts or public speaking or different news articles and things like that. And my wife and I, we've really seen the power of just being able to share the story and encourage people. And 
one of the cool things that's come from this, we've been able to connect with other people and other couples that are going through a similar situation. And so, and so this Moon Family Ministries is just a way for our family to go out and minister to people that are in tough situations. And we're really focused on um, kind of medical or hospital type ministry, mm -hmm. uh, working with hospital chaplains to really just bring hope and, and joy and peace to those that are in really tough situations. Praise God. Very good. Very good yeah. indeed. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. So you had a cardiac arrest running the Twin City 10 mile race. And so therefore you didn't complete the race or did you? I actually did. So a couple of weeks after everything happened, we went back and finished the last two miles. And so Amy, my, my, she was my fiance at the time. She's now my wife, but we were in the hospital and she'd kind of mentioned, Hey, we should, we should finish this, this race sometime. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought that was a great idea. We thought it was an awesome idea. And I think when she said it, she was thinking, you know, maybe in the spring, you know, maybe when, you know, things kind of calm down. Uh, but for me and for my, my personality, I, I wanted to do it, you know, ASAP as soon as possible. So we ended up going back a few weeks later and running and kind of taking a light run. We were medically cleared to run at that point in time. And so I finished the final two miles surrounded by some really great friends and family. And it was a really unique opportunity to just cross that finish line. And it was kind of the, one of the, the moments to say that, Hey, Hey Satan, like you don't win here. Yeah, like your on. fear <laughs> and lie, cheat, steal, whatever you want to do. It's not going to win here because God's so much better and so much greater. And it was just an amazing opportunity to step into that. Fantastic. I did quote earlier from uh, Jeremiah. Where it says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. God's got a plan for your life, uh, Tyler. He's got a plan for my life. And for each one listening up, if you know Jesus as Lord and Savior, God's got a plan for your life too. And we've got to run that race. The apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I've kept the faith. What a great example, Tyler. Uh, a to the rest of us, to keep running, not just a literal physical race, you know, on our feet, but running the spiritual ra race, this, this walk with God. We've got to keep on going and enjoy that transformation that God has brought in our lives. Would you agree? Absolutely. And I, I often think about um, Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3, and I often think about that as another race running kind of scripture verse, but it talks about being surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses and let us run the race, you know, with endurance, stripping off our sin and everything like that. And so I think about as a collective group of Christians, capital C church, how we run together when we're surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. Um, we're really powerful. When we run together. We can fix our eyes and keep our eyes on Christ. Mm. We run that race together as, as a family and as a body of believers. Don't give up, keep running. Tyler, thank you for joining us on The Reality. What a great chat with Tyler Moon, who suffered a cardiac arrest while running a race. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Do drop me an email, dudley at surereality.net. I encourage you today to keep on running. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author of your faith. Again, that email, dudley at surereality.net. The Reality is produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. Please consider supporting us by becoming a vision partner at the website surereality.net. From me, Dudley Anderson, to you, keep on running. Goodbye.